Terrace Total Sports, brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. I'm Chris Saunders sitting in tonight. The SAC Big Red Machine looks to get people to dread the red at the BISS Track and Field Meet Championships as that school goes after its 25th straight championship. However, today, day two, is where QC has shown strength in the past in an effort to bring down the Comet Storm on the Big Red Machine. Today was no different. In the Senior Boys 100, QC Comet Ian Kerr had to rely on a strong drive phase after a lackluster start to fight off two giants and a smart finish got him the championship. His time, 10.8 seconds. Anthony Adley from St. John's finished second in 10.85 seconds. Ralph Walker from St. John's finished third in 11.02 seconds. Uh, the race was good. My stock has been just a tad bit better and I figured I executed perfectly. The Senior Girls Championship came down right to the wire. Let's go to that start of that race. It was Sachs, Devin Charlton, and Kiana Albury. They got snuck on the inside by Aquinas College ace, Carnesha Cox. Carnesha won the event in 11.63 seconds. Charlton settled for second in 11.71 seconds, and Albury took third in 11.73 seconds. Get a 20 meter from drive phase, transition properly, go to the phases, and I think I executed very well. It was real tight uh, coming down there for the finisher. Yeah, it was. Because of the weather, you have to warm up really extremely good, and I'll know better for next time. Now, despite a strong push from the comments of QC, the SAC Big Red Machine still in control of the meet by more than 150 points. After day two, SAC leads with 718 and a half points. The comments from QC in second with 568 points. St. Anne's in third, back from QC by more than 300 points at 233 points. St. John's fourth with 197 and rounding out the top five, St. Andrews with 186 points. The meet wraps up tomorrow. So guys, of course, everybody hating on the red today, it, it seems like. Yeah. What school did you went to, Kishla? You know what school I went to, Chris. <laughs> I but think they're in what? That was more than a decade ago. It has nothing to do with me. Okay. Just 16th place, by days. the way. Oh. 22 simple days to the BTC Track and Field Carifta Championships. March 15th, though, and 16th are the dates for our Carifta Trials. Jamaica and Trinidad have already held theirs this past weekend, and Beat Race President Mike Sands says, Having our trials just two weeks before the games is not a bad decision. Um, I'm satisfied that the two weeks is, is a good time simply because what it does for you is that those athletes, see when you do it too soon, you run the risk of having the athletes not in top condition. But two weeks before an event um, such as this allows you to have the athletes maintain their sharpness and their fitness. So I'm quite satisfied and I must be because we approved the schedule. Uh, we spoke to our colleague president in Jamaica last night on a, on a talk show and uh, he's indicated that they have completed their trials this past weekend, Trinidad completed their trials um, and they had some very, very interesting times. Uh, we're going to print those times and we're going to distribute those times to our coaches and our athletes so they can see because Jamaica is obviously the benchmark. When you speak of a young Jamaican girl running 207 in the 800, that's, that's a pretty fast time or their sprinters running 10-5 into a headwind. Uh, that's reality and so our athletes need to know what they're going to be faced with and I think the, the, the incentive of knowing what the other countries would have done had worked to our advantage as well as the home crowd which we expect to be phenomenal. In tennis news, the Bahamas Lawn Tennis Association is doing its best to get more young players to learn the game. Play and stay program every Saturday at the National Tennis Center. It's a cheap price. Here's President Duran Donaldson. The playing day is going good. I mean, the kids love it. We have the dollar day Saturdays, which we do at 12 o'clock. We've had it for, I think, three weeks now. It's going really good. The kids come out, pay a dollar, and learn tennis. So we're encouraging the public to, you know, come out and support that. The kids can learn tennis at a very cheap price. And even if you don't have the dollar, we still will take you. Some basketball news now. Mailboat Cybots taking game one of the New Providence Basketball Association Championship Series last night in convincing fashion. 97-86, they put the defending champion Commonwealth Bank Giants in a one-zip hole. Game two is set for Friday. Mama's Football Association getting set to host high-level soccer come May 23rd at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. The Tottenham Hotspurs and the Jamaica Reggae Boys will play an exhibition soccer match. Jamaica, we know, coming down south will be bringing a buggy load of fans, black, yellow, and gold. Uh, supported by a colorful group of fans. The fans are very colorful and always bring a special brand of excitement 
to all football matches in which the reggae boys are involved. We know that we have a healthy population of Jamaicans here in the Bahamas and in South Florida, so we, we expect that they will be here in numbers to add to this event. That the Jamaican team will be at full strength. <laughs> we have, you know, we've just called, I would say, approximately 18 players from Europe who will be participating in the next World Cup qualifier, which is going to be against Panama on the 22nd of March in Kingston. For the next game, which is going to be against uh, Mexico, we're going to be having our full team and, and, and more. Currently, we have three premiership players. By the time we play you, I gather it's going to be about six or more. <laughs> And so that is going to make the game even more exciting. Now the Hotspurs are also expected to bring a big fan base as well. I'm hoping that it'll be a time for our, uh, our players and coaching staff to bond together. Uh, and the club's also looking forward to working with the Bahamas Minister of Tourism to help promote this country as a major hub for sports tourism. Indeed, the facilities I've seen, the stadium that we've got here, uh, training facilities, make this an ideal destination, both for clubs, but also for national associations, for them to train and prepare their players, and also when you've got such a wonderful climate. Moving on to sports news now. Generally, Director of Sports Tourism at the Ministry of Tourism, Tyrone Sawyer, and his crew, they're working really hard to get the islands of the Bahamas out there and more people interested. And we've got a, a plan of email blasts to specific Tottenham members around the world. And we're also gonna have some advertising at their various games. And we would also, we've also put in place a landing page on Bahamas.com, which is our online booking site with direct link to the Bahamas Football Association. So the two things are gonna be accomplished. We're gonna generate as much as we could, people who wanna come here, the excitement for the game. And that's a look at sports. I'm Chris Saunders, regional news and weather still to come. This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center.